Have you ever wondered what is thermal throttling and why the heck do we need it? Stay tuned to find out. Hi guys, let's talk about thermal throttling. First of all, let's get the boring stuff out of our way. There are quite a few different names for thermal throttling. For example, dynamic frequency scaling and CPU throttling. Some brands, of course, created their own names for thermal throttling. Intel calls it Speedstep, which was introduced in 2005 with the Pentium 4. And for AMD, one name was not enough. They came up with two terms for it. Power Now, which was introduced in 1998 for laptop processors and Cool and Quiet for desktop CPUs five years later. For those who remember those old CPUs, the Athlon 64 was the first to have Cool and Quiet and the K62 got Power Now. Well, that's it. History lesson over. But back to the topic. What does thermal throttling really do? The idea of thermal throttling is to reduce the frequency of the CPU, to lower its temperature, as well as reduce the power consumption. Let's have a quick look at an animation to explain just for the temperature and the frequency. As you can see, the CPU frequency in blue goes down as the temperature in red goes up. In the end, the temperature should settle just below the highest possible temperature and the frequency should stay above or at least at the base frequency. That is, if thermal throttling is a thing for your hardware. In systems with proper cooling, the highest possible frequency should be doable without hitting the red dotted line. And if you wondered, the 8th generation of Intel CPUs can handle up to 100 degrees Celsius. What you've just seen impacts you, especially when you're using a notebook. Like everything, this has good and bad effects. Let's start with the good things. Keeping your CPU from being cooked is obviously a good thing. A lowered power consumption helps your battery lifetime as well as reduce your power bill. Probably just by a few cents. But hey, after a year or two, you might be able to get some ice cream with it. So you can cool yourself off as well. Really bad joke intended, of course. The downside, on the other hand, is that the lowered frequency means less performance, which is quite okay when your CPU just idles to conserve battery lifetime, but not during computationally expensive procedures, like rendering a video or compiling a program. So, thermal throttling is a necessary feature to save your CPU from death through heat, which was a possibility and even happened every now and then in the good old days ish. Right now, thermal throttling is a huge topic on quite a few YouTube channels. As the new MacBook Pro, to be precise, the version incorporating the Intel i9 is using this method to, to the extreme to stay cool. This is not uncommon to a certain degree with notebooks, but the controversial point is 
that the frequency is lowered below the bass frequency, reducing the performance to or even below the performance of the cheaper Intel i7 version. The frequency graph looks like a fibrillation on an ECJ. Not good. Meanwhile, Apple has released a patch which addresses this problem. According to Apple, it contains a digital key that was missing before, which caused that extreme throttling. To return to the previous comparison, now the frequency is, nicer, is like a nice flat line. We like flat lines. Well, at least in this case. <clears throat> Since there are plenty of videos on this topic, I'll keep my two cents, but in case you are interested in more details, I'll leave a link to Dave Lee's video addressing that issue below. So back to the topic again. When does it usually happen? In desktop PCs, thermal throttling usually occurs when the installed CPU cooler does not suffice. For example, when you're overclocking your CPU and it produces more heat than your poor old stock cooler actually can handle. Thermal throttling can as well occur when your cooler is full of dust, which reduces the airflow. Another reason can be your thermal paste, the stuff between your CPU and your CPU cooler. It can be of bad quality, it can be too little, or it even can be dried out. All of those reasons result in no proper contact to the cooler. Ah, and I almost forgot. Your cooler fan can be broken as well. There are countless reasons and most of them shouldn't concern you. Unless you play with your CPU or unless you keep your PC in a dusty environment. With laptops, on the other hand, thermal throttling is a lot more common. That's simply because the airflow is way more restricted. Hence the heat can't be moved away from the CPU fast enough. You, you can compare that to an arena full of people. The smaller the exits, the longer it takes all the hot air produced at least by some people to get out of the arena. Performance-driven notebooks, in most cases gaming notebooks, are therefore often a lot thicker and a lot louder than the usual business or consumer grade notebooks. So, I think that's the most important stuff on dynamic frequency scaling. Just once more to sum it up. Thermal throttling is a feature which has been here for quite some time that reduces the frequency of your CPU and therefore the heat and the performance as well as the power consumption. If you have any questions, please leave them in the, cons uh, in the comments below. Like if you liked this video, dislike if you didn't. If you are interested in more videos like this, press the subscribe button and then the bell icon uh, <laughs> to be informed about new videos, sorry. Thanks for watching and until next time.